All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Michelle Morris from Consolidated Planning Group. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, we have Jamie Moyer with us today. He's the National Director of Campus Connections at Bloom Consulting. So we thank you so much for being here, Jamie. Um, he is going to tell us about Bloom Consulting today and their services and what they offer. It is a great program. I can't wait to hear more about it. Um, so grab a drink, grab a snack, get settled. We're going to go for about an hour today. Um, again, I'm with Consolidated Planning Group. We are a financial planning firm located just outside of Houston. Um, we help families plan for their special needs loved one's future. So we do a lot of um, protection plans. Perfect timing, Jamie, thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> lifetime care plans, transition planning, you know, what happens when my child is gradu graduates from high school or, or how do we deal with all the things we need to do when they turn 18? Uh, we can help you set up an ABLE account. And, you know, we really focus on education and advocacy for families with special needs loved ones. Um, the reason for that is because the owner of our company has two uh, children who have special needs. So when they were getting uh, ready for that transition period to adulthood, she saw how difficult that all was and was so angry. She said, that's it. We're going to educate everybody. We're going to help everybody through this crazy obstacle course. And that's that's what we do. In addition to all of the financial planning services that, you know, any other financial advisor would help you with. So uh, our our speaker for today, again, Jamie, thank you so much for being here. Um, a couple of quick housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded, and um, after we're all finished, we will send you a link to the recording on our YouTube channel, and we will send you the slides. So anything that's clickable on the slides will be clickable when you get them later on today in your email. Um, any questions or comments you have, please put them in the chat box. We cannot hear you or see you, uh, but we do know you're out there, and I'll be monitoring the chat box as we go. All right, so uh, without any further ado, Jamie, take it away. Thank you, Michelle. Um, as Michelle mentioned, I am Jamie Moyer. I'm the National Director of Campus Connections with Bloom Consulting. We are a Texas-based company, but we do provide services in other states. Um, I'm going to be talking today about the Campus Connections program um, and really just dive into a little bit of college preparation and support for our young adults. A little bit about me. I am a retired Army career counselor. I have an associate's and a bachelor's in communications, and I have a master's in organizational leadership. I have 10 plus years of career and life coaching, um, advising and experience, and I'm currently preparing to take the certified autism um, specialist exam this month. We'll Fantastic. get that. Fantastic. You that look situated. so young. It's hard to believe that you're <laughs> retired and you've been doing this for 10 plus years and all of that stuff. Oh, yes. I get that a lot, especially <laughs> uh, when it comes to getting ID'd. Always have my ID on me. <laughs> um, so without further ado, we'll just dive into really what this session is going to be a breakdown of and, and get into the nitty gritty. Um, so today's agenda, we'll first talk a little bit about preparation. How do we decide? How do we prepare? How do we find support? Um, and then, of course, the support that Bloom Consulting offers with the Campus Connections program, and diving into what that program is, what the components are, and what the enrollment process is. So first and foremost, how do we decide? How do we decide if our young adults are prepared for the workforce or may need a little bit of additional education to really tackle um, their interests and get where they want to be? It's important to look at socially appropriate work behaviors, the ability to perform essential job functions, um, the ability to operate independently. A parent's role should transition from that of an advocate to more of an advisor. Um, for years, we're used to advocating for our children, um, reaching out and, and kind of fighting and, 
and making sure their needs are being met and that everybody is providing the right support. And as they transition into adulthood, it can be also just as difficult for parents to transition to advising and taking that step back and encouraging their child um, who's now becoming a young adult to advocate for themselves and to learn how to advocate for themselves. Um, the ability to manage their own time, including bre breaks, arriving and leaving on time, the ability to perform activities of daily living, um, and really all of these things just allow us to take a step back as parents from our children and just analyze what would be the best way forward for them in addition to what are they hoping to do. If my child wants to be a techno technology coder, um, I cannot encourage them to just go join the workforce um, and find a job so they could just be successfully employed. I need to talk to them about what type of education that would require, what type of discipline that re would require, and go over what essential skills they would need to really hone in on and fine tune prior to seeking that employment. So why college? Um, there are quite a few reasons that people decide to go to college. Some of the ones that we find most important for students that are making the transition from high school into college or into adulthood and determining if college is for them um, is that college provides you a space to learn to live independently where you may not be provided that space when you're living at home um, during high school or even a little bit after high school. Socialization and networking, sampling the real world and its diversity, for a lot of young adults, college is the first place that you ever enter where you see so many diverse individuals as far as how people function, how people communicate, how people look, dress, act. Um, it enables individuals to learn about themselves and build confidence in their own skill sets. It enables individuals to self-advocate. Um, and it helps individuals learn to problem solve, make decisions, and then learn from the mistakes that they may make. Also, if I talk a bit fast, please let me know. I can get excited and just kind of jump in. So um, You're doing feel free. Great. You're doing great so far. <laughs> uh, so once we've determined if our young adult is wanting and able to attend a post-secondary education, it's important to choose what type of education we're going to go after. There are a number of um, programs out there to assist in this process. There are drop-in programs, which are classes that allow students to drop into a class to learn about a certain topic of interest, um, but it's not necessarily that they're enrolled full-time in the college degree program. Um, an example of this would be UT Austin in formal classes. Um, there's also the Transition Academy, which is a non-residential program that places an emphasis on jobs and social skills that lead to employment and life skills. So it's also a post-secondary program. Just again, it is not tied to an official degree. Um, students can attend classes Monday through Friday from 8 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then follow the Texas Tech University academic calendar um, when they're enrolled in this program. So there are a number of programs out there um, that can assist in our young adults obtaining some sort of post-secondary education. It's just, it really takes a lot of research. There's unfortunately not any one-stop shop to really look into what program would be best or what programs are out there. It, it really does come down to looking at the interests of the student, the location that the student is willing to reside or attend, um, and then seeing what opportunities are provided by that program. Um, so there's also college experience programs, which is a transition academy, trade schools, community college, and live at home um, type colleges, which some examples are Austin Community College. They have a STEPS program that provides assistance there. Houston Community College has a college vast program um, and a life path program. There's also four-year university live on campus or apartment programs, and there's some examples for that as well. Essentially, you would talk to your young adult about what program you think would be best for them and what program they think would be best for them. And then you can begin diving into that research to see what the enrollment process is, what the requirements are, um, and what type of skill sets your student will obtain from that program to ensure it aligns with their overall career goals. 
And there sure is a lot of research to do on all of that. Um, some of the things that we can provide help with that. Uh, we have compiled a list of some of the programs that we are aware of um, throughout Texas. So we can help with um, with that, you know, just providing a list for you. And then that way you can at least start, you know, with the schools that are near you or the schools that have the programs that you're most interested in. Thank you for adding that, Michelle. Um, next is deciding whether we're going to go with a certificate or an academic degree. Now, certificate considerations include um, the fact that a certificate leads to immediate career options. Um, they are smaller classes. They provide more hands-on experience versus text, uh, lecture, lecture and textbook. Keep mixing those words. <laughs> um, it can be much more affordable than a four-year degree. It may or may not transfer to a university. So if ultimate goal would be attending a university, it'd be important to look into any prerequisite um, certification program to ensure that it is transferable. Um, it needs to be state certified and accredited program, and um, it, it can take a lot less time to obtain that certification versus an academic degree program. Now, when we're looking at academic degree considerations, we want to look at research potential, uh, researching potential majors. It, career and job exploration is absolutely a must, especially because it does not lead to immediate career options. A lot of times an individual might want a bachelor's degree in marketing. That does not mean that they will get their specific job title and dream job immediately upon graduation. They may have to start out as an assistant to an executive um, or something in that nature as they work their way up to their marketing role. Knowing the job market, it's important to do a little bit of research on how reasonable is that job to find within the area that the student is wanting to reside. Um, how much does it pay? What's the median salary? How many years does it take to reach that median salary? Um, and really dive into those aspects to ensure that this is going to be something that the student really, really wants to do. Um, will it require a graduate degree? If our individual's goal is to be a professor at a college, they may require more than likely a master's degree. So it's important for the student to be aware of that so they know what they're getting themselves into. Career interests versus a hobby. This is a huge one. We talk about it with our students all the time. We have many, many students with huge hobbies that they could very well accomplish daily, um, but Will it lead to a successful career that would allow them to live a very balanced and happy lifestyle? Or is it something they simply enjoy doing to relax and just have a good time? We talk through that with our students um, and then we kind of determine where their interests lie that would lead to a happy and healthy career um, versus a hobby. Academic track and community college versus technical and vocational certifications. Again, this is just doing our research to make sure that we are setting our students up for success by enrolling them in the appropriate program based on their wants, needs, and goals. Um, and then, of course, knowing how long it will take. I cannot tell you how many students um, can get a little worked up in the beginning of a semester because they realize that their program is going to take two years instead of one year. Um, it's just important that the students know going into it exactly how long they can expect um, to be in that program, how their um, academic calendar and course selection can impact the timeline of their education. Um, and that way they can kind of one, be mentally prepared for how long it may take, but also do a little bit of backwards planning um, in order to determine the timeline of, you know, finding part-time work or finding a job or things of that nature. Exactly. Thank Jamie, we do have one question and just a note to participants. I don't want to, you know, just jump in and interrupt Jamie when he's in the middle of a thought, but I will get to your questions as I see them come through. So how, uh, how can we help support people with, with special needs, young adults, um, help them integrate into society and with their professional and career development. I mean, that's basically what Bloom Consulting does. I mean, the answer to that question really is contact Bloom Consulting, isn't it? I mean, that's what you're there for. It 
Can be for sure. Um, I, of course, love our program. I love what we do. Um, we provide kind of a buffer between parents and students because it can be hard to be a parent who's also now trying to be a life coach. Um, there's going to be different perspectives um, from a non-biased third-party life coach than from a parent. Um, and it happens to me too. I have two toddlers. Um, hopefully they won't interrupt us. They are out of school today. But there are things that even my toddlers want to go do, and I don't necessarily want them to do that. I want them to do something else because I see it a different way. I have a different perspective. Um, so it can be hard for me to take that step back and say, you know what? This can also lead you to success. This can also help you reach your goal. I'm going to let you feel it out. And if it's a mistake and you want my advice, I will give it. If it works out well, I will be happy for you, even if it's not the way I would have done it. Um, and so that's kind of what our program offers. And we'll get a little more into it as we dive into these slides. Um, but initially, it's it's just being open to hearing your young adults' wants and needs and goals. Um, there are a lot of young adults out there who have a certain goal in mind that does not align with their parents. And we see them in college a lot longer than they necessarily had to be because they originally started based on what their parents were advising them to do. They were miserable doing it or their grades weren't there or they're frustrated or they still are just really wanting to go do what it is they want to go do and learn. Um, and they end up doing a um, change in their major and it kind mm -hmm. of, it can set them back, but it still leads them to success. So in all honesty, the best thing that you can do is be open to your individual, whether it's your child or your niece or your nephew, or you have custody of them or whatever it may be. Um, it's just being open to listening to what it is they want and then helping decide how to best support them in reaching that goal, even if it's something you may not understand. Um, That's exactly right. And one thing that I've found um, as a parent um, and as my my career as a teacher before I got into this and and just my experience in life is that sometimes with children, um, and this can go back to your question, Shmuel, Shmuel I'm sorry, I, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce your first name, the person who asked this question, um, but people, you know, you as a parent can tell your child over and over and over the right right thing that you think that they should do, or you can give them guidance, you can give them advice. And it, it, you know, it'll go in one ear and out the other one, but then they'll hear that same exact piece of advice from someone else. And all of a sudden it's gospel and they'll believe it and they'll do it. So sometimes just having a good support team to help you, um, you know, guide and influence your child or to help give them advice and, and tell them what they their opportunities are. Um, sometimes just hearing it from someone else is all they need. OK, thank you so much for that great question, Shmuel and um, Jamie. Continue, please. All righty. So our CEO is Dr. James Williams, and he conducted a study to obtain his doctorate. Um, and his dissertation was based on uh, the correlation study investigated the relationship between parental factors and the successful employment of adults age 26 and older diagnosed with an ASD um, in the United States. Now, one of the reasons we add this slide, even though we're a college support program, is because it aligns pretty closely to what we see with our college students as well in their success. Now, this... Um, this research studied three different types of independent variables, demographic, behavioral, and, phys and psychological factors of, of a parent with an adult child diagnosed with ASD. 92 parents from across 48 states, including Hawaii and Alaska, were studied and surveyed. And so the three characteristics or items that were studied were parental characteristics, parental behaviors, and parental expectations. And what was found is that there was no meaningful relationship between the success of a young adult and the parental characteristics or behaviors. The only correlation that was meaningful was parental expectations. So when the parents had a positive expectation, it increased the likelihood of their adult child being successful. 
And we see that a lot with our college students too. The more our parents are doubting the student's ability to be successful independently, the more difficult it seems to be for that child to really believe in themselves and dive into their education. Um, so we add that on here just to kind of show how important it is to just simply believe in our young adults and in their ability to be successful in college. Um, the next slide is about how we prepare. I'm sorry, did you hear my kid? No, no, I just, oh. I love this slide. College is a gym, not a spa. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's when we're preparing our kids, um, we need to make sure that we're helping them understand that it is a gym and not a spa. We're not there to just have fun and, and have things brought to us. It does take self-advocacy and a lot of hard work. Um, in high school, resources are, ident I'm so sorry, my Stay right there, buddy. That's okay. I think everybody here has kids and pets and distractions. That's totally fine. So again, while Jamie is taking a quick break, I will just remind everybody that this session is being recorded and we will email you the slides um, later on today, and we will also send a link to the recording. So all of the webinars that we do live on our YouTube channel after the webinar is done. So you'll get a link to that YouTube channel and to this specific webinar, along with, of course, our contact info. So you can get in touch with Jamie at Bloom Consulting and ask him any questions about his business, or you can get in touch with me at Consolidated Planning Group and um, ask any questions that you want about our business and what we do. We do have a couple slides at the end of the presentation that will go through who we are at Consolidated Planning Group. All right, everyone, I am so sorry about that. That's perfect, Jamie. He is four and was having a breakdown. I We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. Back to gym versus spa. In high school, resources are identified and made available to students. Um, in college, students are required to seek the resources that they need. Um, and oftentimes, even when parents try to step in to assist the students, the school will not necessarily talk to the parents. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more too in the upcoming slides. In the workforce, students must self-advocate to receive reasonable accommodations. So college being more of a gym and not a spa allows the students to begin exercising that ability um, and that level of initiative, but also that level of understanding um, regarding when and why they may want to request their accommodations or, and or disclose their disabilities. Next is the seven habits of highly successful students with disabilities. This has been stolen from a book, um, mm -hmm. but it is our CEO's absolute favorite, most profound piece of information that he likes to ensure he's mentioning it and providing to both students and parents. Uh, one is self-advocacy. Next is self-determination. Next is motivation, accommodations, disclosure, soft skills, and hard skills. Um, and Really, his two favorites are self-advocacy and self-determination, um, the ability to choose and enact choices to control oneself. Um, he has found to be one of the most important factors when it comes to our students' success um, and his own success as he went through college. I think that's pretty universal. Absolutely. All of those can help all of us be successful. Um, next is preparing with um, providing you all recommendations regarding setting our students up for success and then setting ourselves up for success. So for students, our recommendations are to be proactive before they get to college, to learn and respect the new processes and rules, to help them develop self-advocacy and independence, to help them create stability and predictability, especially in the college environment, it can be difficult. You have to set up your own schedule to create that. You cannot rely solely on your class schedule. Um, 
let them make choices and experience the consequences of those choices and help them learn flexibility, especially with a new environment and new rules. Now, setting ourselves up for success as parents is learn learning and respecting new processes. IDEA no longer applies, so it's important to just be aware of that. FERPA is what dictates what you can and cannot know. Um, so there will be schools where they cannot tell you your students' attendance. They cannot tell you their grades. That's all based on the student being open and honest um, with you and filling you in with what's going on in their life. Students must self-advocate. They have to sign up for new services. Many, many schools, almost all schools um, that we've worked with at least, the um, disability services will not reach out to any students that have disabilities. They, ha they legally are not able to. Um, the student has to go there and seek services and self-identify in order to get those services and supports. So it's important that the students know that. Um, so that way they're not two months into their education and frustrated that they don't have extra time when they absolutely need it um, and are thinking that the system is set up against them. But in reality, the system is just designed to force that self-advocacy. Um, with student disability services, it's important to understand what they can do and what they cannot do. And then learning what else is out there for support. One example would of course be our program. Um, the more programs that you can find that can support your child through their college education, the better off they're going to be. And that might even mean signing up for multiple services and then after one semester saying, okay, what worked, what didn't work, and then getting rid of what didn't work and keeping what did work. Right. And it's so important to self-advocate because those, you know, the IEP that you had in in middle school and high school, it doesn't transfer over to college level. It just kind of disappears. And when you get to the college level, you can ask for the same accommodations, but you have to understand what accommodations you need and why, and make sure that the school is willing to help and provide them and your student has to go after it. It can't just, like Jamie said, they're not just gonna bring everything to you. Yes, absolutely. Next is potential funding, and that falls under how we find support. Um, there's a number of ways to acquire funding um, for students, whether it's to go to college or to, you know, have money to be able to go to events socially. Um, and these, this is just a breakdown of some of those things. Summer employment, students need to have summer work or volunteer experiences. This is going to set them up for success when it comes to employment and college. And then sometimes a culmination of the two. It's important they get out there and get those experiences and start learning those social skills um, and learning those soft skills that make individuals successful when it comes to employment that maybe aren't talked to as often in high school um, as they are talked about once you are out of high school and transitioning to adulthood. Next is VR supports. Sign up for VR services in high school. Expect student eligibility takes time. Students must meet. Um, and, and communicate with their VR counselor in order to maintain those supports and funding supports um, degrees that lead to employment. So um, VR funding and support can be extremely, extremely helpful for individuals. Um, financial aid, there are FAFSA forms that must be completed each year according to campus deadlines, part-time work in college and work study. Um, those can all provide different levels of financial aid to support our young adults in college. Grants and scholarships, checking out um, with high school counselors and kind of discussing what, what applications or scholarships that student can apply for. Um, civic clubs and organizations in the college community, those can also provide some grants or scholarships that your student may be eligible for. And then employers and volunteer groups can also assist in this area as well. And then lastly, we have part-time jobs. Check for positions on or around campus that can help your student um, be successful while earning a little bit of income and gaining some of that financial independence and responsibility. So these are all ways that the student can kind of 
get their own funding. But if a parent wants to save money for their child, they should also consider an ABLE account. You know, you can open an ABLE account for your child and save money there for them to use for school or for other things that will help them achieve a better life. Um, as long as your child has a disability that began before age 22. Um, and that is something that we can help you set up and help you understand. We've done previous webinars about that as well, if, you, if you're curious about the ABLE account. Thank you for adding that, Michelle. All right, next is just discussing some of the support um, with disability services. So some of the support that's generally offered uh, by disability services includes personal and crisis counseling services, specialized group programs, group counseling services, career counseling and testing, academic content tutoring and study skill courses, extended testing time, interpreters, note taking, reader services, scribe services, and audiobooks and other adaptive technology services. So it's just important when we have a student that has officially enrolled in school, they've determined what program they want to do, what college they're going to, all of those things. It's very important to help that student navigate disability services to really understand what they will offer, what types of supports they will offer, what type of supports they cannot offer, um, and, and move through the system that way um, to increase their likelihood of success. All right, next is Campus Connections. So Campus Connections is an innovative program designed to support neurodiverse college students with various disabilities as they attend the post-secondary institution of their choice. They could be attending this um, post-secondary institution through virtual means or in person. The program is available for undergraduate through doctorate completion. Um, and essentially what we do is we help students navigate um, life circumstances beyond high school. So anything they may run into that they might need help with or coaching on or have questions about or need to increase their skill on, we work around um, those concerns in order to help them be more successful and independent. Um, it's designed to support any student at any institution uh, and, and we deliver individualized service where we work closely with VR and higher education partners, which includes disability services um, on each of our campuses. We cannot provide accommodations like disability service centers can, so our program is designed to support and enhance the existing accommodations um, and not to take over them or get rid of them or anything of that nature. So I created this fun little swirly thing to yeah. just indicate that a college student's path is not a straight path where everything is just you you stop at step one you complete step one you move to step two it's very windy it can include a number of different things um, and fortunately with our program our coaches help the students navigate each of those areas so our coaches will help them whether it has to do with their career path or their roommate being annoying. <laughs> um, they are there for them to help them work through those concerns. Um, a lot of our parents get calls from their students complaining about roommates or something of that nature. And the parents often tell us, I told them exactly what they needed to do to get that situated, but they didn't want to hear it. They just said, yeah, yeah, mom, yeah, yeah, dad, and hung up. Um, and I don't know if they're actually doing it to fix the problem or not. Most of the time, um, it just has to do with what we were talking about earlier. We don't want to hear stuff from mom and dad. Um, they're just they being, don't know anything. Yeah, they're just being mom and dad. And that's just who they are. So I don't want to listen to them. Um, so this could look anything like, I hate that my roommate leaves dishes in the sink and I don't know how to address it. All the way to, my professor's not allowing me to use my accommodations, right? And that doesn't necessarily mean that the professor is being mean and not allowing them to use accommodations. Um, it just means that that's how the situation is being perceived and it might need a little bit more digging to get to the bottom of what the true issue is. So one of the things we emphasize in Campus Connections is enabling our students to really self-identify what their problem is at the core. 
What is the concern? Where is this coming from? Let's talk about every piece of it. And then we're going to work through with you the critical thinking process for you to determine the best approach forward. Because as many of us may know, some may not know, but the likelihood of us accomplishing something has to do with how intrinsic that motivation is. If the motivation comes from within, if I want to write a book just because I really want to write a book, I am going to be 10 times more likely to actually write that book than if I'm only writing a book because somebody else told me I should. So what we really try to do is work with our students to get them to come to their own conclusion and their own answer of how they want to move forward. Many, many times this has to do with um, time management. Okay, the, our students, their whole life, they've been told, get a paper planner. Paper planner doesn't work. Let's do a planner on the phone. Let's do reminders. Let's set a timer. Let's do alarms. Let's do this. Let's get a whiteboard. They've been given all the tools, but none of them seem to work. So what a coach would do is sit them down and say, well, why doesn't this one work for you? What do you think it is about it that just doesn't work? And then you go through each of those. And then you talk through what does work or what has worked or what helped make it more successful. And then we can collaborate to think about a method that would work for that student. Maybe they don't need a whiteboard, but they need sticky notes mm -hmm. all across their mirror. First thing in the morning, sticky notes everywhere. Tells them to take their meds, brush their teeth, to do whatever it is they may need to do. Maybe for another student that doesn't work, but either way, if a student comes to me and says, I just can't stay on task or manage my time properly and I don't know why, if the first thing I do is tell them what they should do to be successful, it will not work. At least not at the same level as it would if they came up with the answer themselves. So a lot of what we do is asking different critical thinking type questions um, to get the student to start to come to their own realization of what they need to do to be successful. And we do that in all areas that you see on this slide and anything in between or that is not squeezed on the slide. Um, and now some of these are required, like they're actual components of our program. So let's dive a little bit into that. Jamie, before you go into that, um, your last slide was talking about some of the um, services that might be offered, support services uh, by the college. Have you found that larger colleges offer better or more support services or smaller schools, or is it, it just depends on the school? So far, I have not found any correlation to the size of the school. I think it really does come down to the school um, and, and the employees that work there and if they're set up for success and if they have the tools they need um, to really help support that student. Um, but I would definitely advise anybody to look into any reviews or um, things of that nature to learn a little bit more about the disability services provided at this, the campus that the student is interested in going to. Fantastic. Thank you. Of course. I would also add that if it does seem to be a struggle, um, our coaches are designated to help be an in-between between the student and disability services. So if the student is continually going to disability services and they are not getting what they need, they are being advised and encouraged by us to advocate about that to us so we can reach out to the director of the program and say, look, we have this student, they've asked for this type of help multiple times and they're not getting it. What do we need to do to make this happen? And a lot of times if that student is funded by the state, that disability service or, or individual is going to get on their stuff and make sure it happens because nobody wants the state looking into the services they're providing for, for a negative reason, I should say. <laughs> um, so next is our program components. A Campus Connections coach will provide individualized support to each student that includes mentoring, guidance, and navigational support. The goal of this relationship is to empower students to problem solve their concern while also fostering informed choice and greater self-advocacy. Um, so a huge component of this program that I probably should have mentioned sooner is that when a student enrolls in the program, I match them with one of my coaches based on the needs, the geographical location, um, 
sometimes behavioral, like the social aspect, but I match them with a coach and that coach will then provide them with a career assessment. Um, we utilize the Berkman assessment, which we'll talk a, a little bit about um, in the next, next slide. Um, they offer weekly one-on-one -on -one support sessions. Um, those are mandatory. The students are required to attend one session a week with their coach to discuss anything and everything regarding life or concerns or achievements or anything. Um, they're also available for as needed support. This term is used very, um, very broadly, right? As needed support could be anything from joining a student out on a public transportation to learn a bus route all the way to sending the coach a text message saying, this just happened and I'm not sure what to do. So um, they can get additional weekly meeting. They can meet up for a transportation training where they're going to ride the bus from somewhere to one location to another location just to get comfortable and start learning the bus system. Um, it could be learning Uber. It could be learning to cook. It could be sending a quick text message and asking a question. Next is a monthly wrap. We conduct what's called a wraparound meeting each, each month. It's a progress meeting where we go over the student's current um, status, whether it's grades and attendance or just mindset where they are in life. And then we discuss where they want to go and where they've come from. So we kind of talk about the last 30 days, today, and then the next 30 days. Um, and we talk about all of the different areas of life, social, um, social, financial, educational, career. We talk about everything. And what's important about these meetings is that we invite any support person in that student's life to attend that meeting with us. So oftentimes it looks like campus connection coach, student, um, state VR counselor, sometimes disability service specialist, sometimes therapist, sometimes counselor, sometimes mentor, sometimes roommate. Um, and the first and last wrap of each semester includes the parents as well. So this allows us to get a really well-rounded idea for any concerns that people might be facing or the student is facing and how we can all provide the right support to make that individual successful instead of the student brings it up to the coach, the coach gives one recommendation and then the student brings it up to disability services and disability services gives another recommendation. And now the student's kind of feeling lost in what exactly they should do. Um, so we try to bring everybody together and really foster cross-functional partnering in order to band together and create a really strong support system for that student to be successful. Next is weekly GST and GSAs. That stands for group skills training and group skills activities. These are held weekly. Um, we do a minimum of one training session per week. And then we have a number of social activities that are throughout the month. And these could be anything from karaoke to um, giving a sex education training. That I, I always mention that one because it is our most popular. The students love the sex education. Um, and we teach it in multiple parts. It first begins with talking about the spectrum of friendship um, and relationships. So how do we go from not knowing somebody to becoming an acquaintance to becoming a friend and then maybe even dabbling in dating? And then what happens beyond dating once you start dating and how does that work? How do you navigate it? How do you be safe? How do you, you know, everything included in that. Um, we also go over time management. We go over dressing for success and resumes. We go over um, different like samples of cooking. So we'll do how to bake a brownie in the microwave because you're in college and we like brownies. <laughs> right. Or how to how to um, make soup or mac and cheese or, you know, little things like that will go over. A lot of times those training sessions are going to be held on Zoom. So all students across any states um, can attend that training. And then our social activities are based on geographical location. We do have a number of them happening this semester in the Houston area because we've acquired more and more students in the Houston area. So we're excited about that. 
But those social activities are always going to be in person. And it'll look something like meeting up for coffee or going ice skating or going to the movies or anything that the students uh, mention they may be interested in. Next is internships. All of our Campus Connection students that require or um, maybe don't require but are encouraged to attend some sort of internship or externship, our coaches will help the students navigate that. They'll help them navigate the resume. They'll help them um, conduct mock interviews and kind of learn how to get comfortable answering different questions. And then we have an additional job placement program that is only offered to our Campus Connection graduates. So once a student graduates from college with Campus Connections, uh, we talk to them about continuing with Bloom Consulting to our job placement program, and that provides them with additional, more in-depth training on resumes, interviews, dressing for success, um, and just a lot of the skills required in employment. And then it also provides them with um, application assistance, job links, and then we kind of monitor it based on benchmarks. Um, it is through the state. So the state essentially says what the benchmarks are, but we're trying to find professional level employment for those graduate students um, in order to help them jumpstart their success. So your, your program, I mean, it's called Campus Connections. So it's meant mainly for students who are in college. How early could a student start, you know, sign up? Like, would, would a junior in high school or a senior in high school benefit from signing up and starting to get some of this stuff? Or is it just when they go to college or, or how does that work? Um, so it is based on being actively enrolled in college. So if they're okay. 17 and they're attending college courses through community college that has contracted with this, the ISD or something of that nature, um, and they're an active college student, even though they're still in high school, we can absolutely still assist them. Um, but they do need to be actively in college, um, taking college courses. Okay. And do they have to have a formal diagnosis to work with you? They only have to have a formal diagnosis if they are receiving state funding. And that's just so our requirements match the state. But essentially, this program can be supported through private pay for any individual in the world, regardless of disability, um, diagnosis. It, it really, if somebody thinks that they need a little bit of extra support, we're here for it. Okay, um, and we great, would absolutely thanks. love to have that, have them. Um, I will say, well, we'll talk a little bit more about the enrollment process in two slides. Um, and so I'll answer any additional questions regarding enrollment Perfect. there. Thank you, Jamie. Of course. So um, I mentioned our career assessment at the beginning of the Campus Connection slides. We utilize the Berkman Method Assessment, and this gives us a very in-depth breakdown of the students' um, interests the components of their behavior, um, how they behave when they're effective and at their best and feeling great and having their needs, needs met, what their needs and expectations are, and then what happens when those expectations aren't met. How does that student show stress so we can identify, oh no, a, a need is not being met, Let's talk through this and let's figure out how to meet that need. But it also gives us a good breakdown of um, different interests and level of interest. So if a student comes in and they say that they want to be an, um, a tour guide hiking up a mountain, but their interest in outdoors is 5%, we're going to sit down and talk to them about what all of that means and what it could look like. Maybe their interest is actually more in scientific um, area of outdoors and not actually physically being outdoors and hiking mountains all day, every day um, as a tour guide. So we get to utilize that assessment to understand our student better and help guide them to a very, very lucrative, more successful career um, that is based on their intrinsic needs and wants and, and desires. So our enrollment process, I threw on here um, just some logos from a lot of the colleges that our students are currently attending. 
our program, one of the number one questions that I have received since starting with Bloom is what colleges are we allowed to work with? We can work with absolutely any college. The college does not matter. All that matters is that the student wants our support and is in a secondary education. Um, and that could even look like um, a trade school that's not a college. They might be getting their welding certificate. We would be happy to help them. Um, they just need to be enrolled and attending. So these are some of the logos from the schools we work with. Um, the enrollment process is quite simple. First, the student is referred um, by the VR school, higher education, parents, community, or organization, or themselves. Um, and next is the application. If the student is um, referring themselves, or if they live with you and you don't want to fill out a referral form just for us to call them and have them fill out an application, um, then they can just go do their application. It is, um, you know, a drop down, fully accessible um, document that just asks questions about diagnosis, college, goals, interests, like just a general gist and understanding of why the student might be interested in campus connections. Um, once we receive that, we do ask for additional documentations, which are diagnosis if they're state funded, or if it's something we need to know. Um, transcripts from any previous college that they've attended or high school, if this is their first time in college. And then lastly, it is a welcome letter from the college if the individual is a freshman. Once we have, go ahead. Tell us a little more about state funding. That would just be through the VR program at the Texas Workforce Commission. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So um, generally, a lot of students that apply to our program, they don't necessarily know if they're going to receive funding through the state or privately. Um, but if they have a counselor already through TWC, then we're able to just immediately reach out to that counselor and request the service authorization to begin providing services. If the individual is not working with the state for VR resources, then we would encourage them to apply. Um, but if they didn't want to or they were able and, and interested in conducting private pay, then they don't need to work with the VA at all or the VR. I'm sorry. Um, and so our private funding cost is $1,000 a month in the state of Texas. It can vary on state. I, I'm not sure how many people we have in attendance right now that are outside of Texas, but um, please, if you are outside of Texas and you have any questions or are wondering if we provide um, services that are funded through the state in your state, please send me an email, give me a call, and I'd be happy to answer those questions. Um, now, once we receive all of the supporting documentation and the application, I then send a message to the student and I generally will CC the um, parents and the counselor if they are receiving state funding. And I'll request them to schedule a one hour um, Zoom interview with me. I'll ask the student and the parent a number of questions just about what they've experienced in high school or what they're currently experiencing in college, um, how they function the best, what they're looking for from our program, things of that nature. And then within seven days, I will send out a um, determination letter regarding their acceptance into the program. Once the determination has been made, all there's left to do is determine funding. We'll request authorizations from VR if they are already enrolled in the VR, or we'll request um, the information for private pay if they are going to be private paying. Once the funding has been determined, um, we begin the services. Um, the student will sign the student enrollment form with their coach, and then they'll have their first meeting um, with their coach and they'll schedule reoccurring meetings, they'll schedule their wraparound meetings, um, they'll complete a release of information to make sure that we can give information to parents if they want us to and things of that nature. Um, and then they'll also access Basecamp, which is our social platform for the students to be able to connect with each other, but also see what we're up to as far as the GSTs and GSAs. So the enrollment process um, it might sound a little daunting right now, but it's actually extremely fast process. I've, I've accepted individuals in as quick as a day. Um, if the student sent me the application first thing in the morning with all supporting documents, and as soon as I receive it, I message them, 
requesting an interview and they lock in an interview for that day. And then I have a great interview with them. I'll send an acceptance that day. Um, it's not necessarily a super long or daunting process. Next, we have our common questions. Um, many individuals ask us if we only accept incoming freshmen. No, we accept all students um, for all classifications. They could be in their last semester of their doctoral degree um, and decide that they want to receive our services and we would be happy to have them. Um, is there an age minimum or maximum for students applying to Campus Connections? Absolutely not. Um, we are open to any student that's attending a post-secondary institution where we're able and willing to assist them regardless of age. Does the student have to be at a four-year university to be enrolled in Campus Connections? No. We accept students who are attending community college, trade schools, or certification programs. Um, is there funding available if I'm unable to pay out of pocket? Yes, we accept state vocational rehabilitation funding in Texas and Nevada. Um, we are hoping to expand this over time, but um, right now, these are the two states that we currently hold active contracts with. How much does it cost for privately paid or funded um, Campus Connections students? That's $1,000 per month billed on the first day of each month. What if the student isn't enrolled at one of our partner schools? Again, our partner schools have nothing to do with where we can provide services. We can provide services to any student attending any post-secondary program. Um, and that includes if there's a Texas student that's going to University of Phoenix and it's fully online, we can still support them. That, that does not bother us at all. Um, we just connect with that school, we get information on disability services, we learn more about the student's schedule, and we help provide whatever support that student is needing at that point in time. Um, one second. We, we got to try and wrap it up here after this slide. I do see that we have one question about whether or not there are any discounts for children of veterans or, you know, police officers or nurses or anything like that, any discounts available. Uh, would, we would like for you to mention that, but then uh, we need to wrap it up. Yep, no worries. We're right at the end here too. Um, so we don't currently have any um, discounts that are official and, you know, on paper or anything like that. But we do often talk about discounts for referrals. Um, if an individual has two students in our program or is referring individuals, we, we will work with people. That's what's great about being a small company is that we can, we can kind of work through different things based on different questions or scenarios or situations. Um, and so I won't read through the rest of these questions just for the sake of time, um, but the answers are on there. You will receive the slides. And then my next slide is just some links to get to the different services we offer. Bloom Consulting does not just offer Campus Connections. We have a number of other programs as well. So feel free to check those out. Um, the, the contact information for the people who manage each program are on those pages. So you will be able to re receive that, that contact information and ask them questions if you would like. And then um, this is my closing slide and I'll hand it back to Michelle for, um, for closing out on your end. Perfect, perfect. There is one last question. If you go to the next slide, I'll talk about this real quick. How are your services different from colleges that offer coaching? I mean, really you're kind of a liaison between college coaching and the students, right? Yes, and so our coaching um, is more I would say um, well-rounded. It's not specifically on how to be successful at that college. It's how to be successful in life. We're talking about anything the student might be running into. We are not academic coaches, so we're not solely there to talk to them about their grades. We are general coaches that are going to talk about grades, relationships, finances, decision-making, critical thinking, informed choice, um, and looking ahead to be successful within that individual's career um, and their goal towards independence. Fantastic. This slide, go ahead to the next one. That will be clickable when you get it to see our upcoming webinars. We do, you know, two or three different webinars every week on various topics that will help 
uh, people with special needs loved ones navigate all of this craziness. Um, future care cost estimates, we help with life insurance, we help with your investments to make sure that they're in place. We talk about um, SSI benefits and SSDI, what the difference is and what you can, can get, uh, waiver programs, ABLE accounts, special needs trust. These are things that we specialize in, we talk about every day. So if you have a question about these kinds of topics, residential living facilities, guardianship, um, other post high school ed uh, educational options or anything like that, you can reach out to us. Um, next slide, please. This is our team. We are located just outside of Houston. The four on the top is two husband and wife teams. We are the advisors. And then we have a staff that helps us with all the paperwork and everything. Um, and if you want to schedule with us, the last slide that I have for you will show you how you can use the QR code to log right into our calendar and schedule your appointment. Or if the QR code isn't your thing, you can call call our office or email us and we'll set up an appointment for you. The initial consultation is always free. We're going to find out what your questions are and get those answered to the best of our abilities. Learn about your family and what your situation is, and then tell you about how we work and how we charge and decide if, if we would be a good fit to work together. Um, you can also see our Facebook page is down there and our YouTube channel, so you can keep up with us in those ways. So I think that's all. We've run a minute over. I'm so sorry for that. But if anybody has any other questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or to Jamie. Thank you for being here, Jamie, and for all who attended for taking time out of your day to sit with us. And I hope it was helpful. So thank you all very much and, and have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks so much.